Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to uh, the next part of my mini album tutorial. And today we're going to talk about the cover. Um, you'll notice that the camera is a little further away to give me more room because this is just a little bit bigger of a scale than I normally need to do because it's going to take up a lot of room. So here I've made one of my nifty little drawings uh, and note cards about the cover. Basically, our pages are eight by eight. Are the, is the size of the page pockets. And um, when you put the page down on the cover, it will kind of fit like this. And I want basically the side that's on the binding will be flush with the side and I need a half inch around the other three sides. So that's how I determine the dimension of my cover. So it's eight inches plus one half plus one half, so nine inches this way, and eight and a half this way, to allow just one half inch on just the one side of the um, side, the horizontal dimension, because the other way, we don't need the extra half inch because the binding is gonna be flush up to the uh, side. So that's how I got my dimension, and I wrote it on one of these. It's gonna be eight and a half by nine. Okay, so it's it's a square mini album that's not going to be perfectly square. So hopefully you can, um, you know, get over that. <laughs> um, but uh, you could make it totally square. I just like to keep it really even around there. So here we go. I've got eight and a half by nine. Our spine, uh, when we made the binding, we made the binding, it's about two inches wide. So I'm going to make the spine three inches wide, giving us a half inch on either side. Um, you could make it a little wider if you wanted, um, but the three inches would be about the slimmest it would be, it could be with the binding being two inches wide, okay? So I also make my covers double thick. Um, if any of you have seen the um, tutorial that Terry's scrapbooking put out, um, I'm borrowing very heavily from her advice. I think she's awesome. Her video, uh, tutorial about I think it's a home sweet home album from graphic 45 it's gorgeous and she does a great job and has a lot of great tips so I'll put a link down below um, so you can check out that video but um, she's the one I got a lot of these idea from one of them also being making the covers double thick with the chipboard so that's why we're cutting four of these pieces at eight and a half by nine two of these pieces at nine by three okay we're also going to need two Tyvek strips at two by eight and three quarters. Um, Tyvek is this like um, kind of plasticky paper that won't rip. Um, you probably all know what it is at this point. If you don't, like, you know, I got these because my um, accounting firm that I work at uses Tyvek envelopes to mail everything um, bigger than, you know, everything. The big envelopes we have are all Tyvek. If you get those FedEx envelopes, those are Tyvek too. So if you don't have access, I can just bring home a couple from work and one or two of those envelopes will last you a very long time. You could just go to like a FedEx store and take a couple because they're free mailing supplies for FedEx. So it's that, you know, plasticky stuff. And this just helps keep the, um, you'll see how we use it, but it helps keeping it from ripping in the sides. This gets sandwiched in between the chip uh, chipboard I also have one uh, 12 by 12 piece of paper that I've cut in half down the middle so it's um, 12 inches high still and only six inches across and that's important to remember in this paper because there is a direction in this paper so I really had to cut this paper up the middle vertically as opposed to this way because then it wouldn't have looked the text wouldn't have been the right way up Okay, so that's what I have. I chose this paper because I just think that looks so cool. So this is going to be the cover. Then you also need a piece of contrasting paper that's also going to be the cover. And I felt like this is going to be the spine and the edges that fold around onto either side. And this is like a fabric-y um, paper that I got at Michael's. Um, actually, let me show you. And this is cut at 10 and a half by 12, so I have this inch and a half strip left. And you can see this was the original color. I basically just um, 
rubbed this all over with the uh, Tim Holtz Walnut Stain Distress Ink. Um, and I don't think there's a... Um... Oh, here it is. This is the um, tag from the paper. It's a Recollections paper single sheet. I, I believe it was like $179. Um, it's woven paper is what it's called there. Um, but I like the kind of binding part to have maybe um, sometimes I've, I've used some um, burlap. I think it has a nice look. So I think this will look really nice. And um, I just darkened it up a little bit with that Distress ink. So basically when we do this, the album is going to have this kind of paper wrapping around and then this paper here. So I thought that that looked pretty good together. I also like the fabric on the binding. I don't know. It makes it look a little more rugged and appropriate for a travel album. Okay. Um, we're also going to need two pieces of cardstock. Uh, cut at eight and seven eighths by two and a half. The only reason I kept this at two and a half wide is because they were just cardstock scraps I had. Um, and this is going to go um, basically kind of over the um, fold of the book. It's going to hide sort of the break in the cover. You'll see later when we get to that part. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, and I'm going to kind of clear out all the stuff we don't need right now. So all we're going to need right now is one of our Tyvek sheets or strips, one of our large pieces of chipboard, and one of our spine pieces of chipboard. Okay. So basically what we're going to do is glue this Tyvek on here. Now I do put a little space in. Some people don't. Um, I like to, to put a little space in. And we're just going to glue this like that. Okay. Now I have... Find it. I made this little shim of two pieces of um, cardstock, or sorry, chipboard that I glued together to kind of be a guide. Um, I feel like that's a good rule of thumb, although this is based on only single thick chipboard cover, so I bet I could probably make this even a little thicker. Um, but I use this as a guide to know how much room I need in between. Um, the pieces okay but um, you know it, it doesn't have to be super super precise but you basically just want enough so when you when the, the um, cover folds it's comfortable so I'm gonna take some glue here um, and this is not coming out I feel like I'm always declogging these I'll use this Okay, there we go. So I'm just putting this glue on the Tyvek. Um, you want to have too much glue rather than too little on this part. And it doesn't also, this is not going to show, okay? So if it's not perfectly lined up, it's fine. But you basically want to have it a little less than halfway. You want more than half left open and flapping, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to stick this down. Kind of clean up some of that extra glue and let's see, did I get any glue out on the side? No. Okay. So that's easy. Now we're just going to glue this piece right here. And again, this is where we want to make sure that we leave just a little bit of room. And I'm actually going to pull out this ruler to make sure that I get these pieces like exactly straight with, with one another so the bottom um, edge is totally flush. Okay, so that looks good. Um, I'm going to take this. I'm going to put the glue on the chipboard this time. Because I want to make sure that the glue goes all the way to the edge. Okay. And again, 
This isn't gonna show. So if it's not perfect, it's not a huge deal. Now Terry does put a little bit more of a gap in between um, and I just don't I don't know why but again there are some people that put it all the way up there's some people that leave gap there's some people that leave a bigger gap kind of split the difference I guess well, that's not really perfect okay there we go so basically that's what we have okay so you can see here the function of the Tyvek is gonna just to beat it, once we cover this in paper, that you have this super strong um, material here that's not gonna tear, and that cover is really gonna hold together very well. So now what we're gonna do is take one more piece of the um, eight and a half by nine, and the other piece of Tyvek and glue this down over here, okay? Same exact thing. Okay, so now basically we've got essentially our cover at this point, okay? So what we're gonna do is now put a second layer of chipboard over this. So basically that, and I know I say the word basically a lot, I need to not use that word so much. We're just gonna glue one piece down here, one piece down here, and then our second spine piece right here, okay? So then this will fold like that, okay? So this is probably where you use the most glue of just about anything. in this whole book. So I'm just gonna put a lot of glue in here. Make sure I get the edges. Okay. I spilled over a little bit, it doesn't matter because I'm gluing this whole thing down. Um, oh, that would be the wrong way, Ben. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. So then you'll just do that for these other two pieces and it's um, a piece of cake. So I will join you back when I have this all glued together. Okay, welcome back. I've got my double thick cover, you know, ready to go. Um, and it can really, you know, move freely, right? So that's good. Um, and, and I was thinking about this too while I was doing it. If you're doing a double thick cover, you have to put a gap in. If you do the double thick cover and me leave the, the um, cover flush with the spine, it's not going to close. Or it'll be really difficult to with the Tyvek sandwiched in between two layers. Um, so if you're doing the double thick, and you're doing it like this where you sandwich the Tyvek and you have to have a gap because if it was, you wouldn't, it wouldn't open as freely. So this is, allows me really nicely uh, range of motion with the uh, cover. So the next part, we're gonna take the pattern paper that we cut in half down the middle and we're gonna use this to cover the outside edges. So basically we're gonna put it like this and then fold it around to cover. So, um, the other thing that you can do, and how I have done mini ovens before as well, is this part being done with solid cardstock and cover the album with the solid cardstock and then place pattern paper on top of it. 
Um, I like the clean look that covering with pattern paper gives. So uh, you can do either way. Um, first, what I want to do, though, is put a line on this side that's one inch in, because we want one inch to be able to be left on the end to flip over. So I love this, this ruler from Fiskars here. It's a centering ruler, so I can see that I have exactly an inch in and you know, I'm making this line in pen because nobody will ever see it once I put it on. Okay, so that allows me to line this up and have an inch worth of paper left to fold over. Now I wanna look here, I really don't care. If you had a more of a specific pattern, you know, you could choose kind of a little bit of vertical movement here of what you wanted to show, but since it's kind of an all over pattern, I really don't care. Um, but you do have some leeway there. So basically what I wanna do now is just glue this down. Um, and I'm gonna center it. Just kind of put these lines here of where I'm gonna place it because now I know exactly where I need to put the glue, okay? So I'm just gonna apply glue in this area. I'm gonna place the edges first. Take that off. This is where you definitely have to make sure the edges get glued because you don't want the edges of the paper here coming up. Okay. Just clean that off so it doesn't clog up. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna make sure my paper is oriented correctly, yeah. And place this down. Okay, if you have a brayer, <laughs> it would be really good to use. But I'm just gonna stick it down, okay? And then fold this over and I can do this from the other side too. Okay, so that's good. Now why this, while this dries a little bit, and it is a quick dry glue, so it does dry pretty quickly. I'm gonna take my scissors and miter these corners, okay? Doesn't have to be exact. Um, actually, I wanna come in a little more than that even. Okay. This just helps it when you start folding the edges up to have these corners mitered like this. Okay, so that's what we have right now. Um, and what I'm going to do is take the glue. Now this is one place where you could use score tape. I would put a line of score tape here, here, and here, and then another line of score tape here, here, and here, and then fold it over just like I'm gonna do now. Um, because you're gonna put another layer over this once it's closed, so even if the score tape comes up, it's not a huge deal. Um, I'm still gonna use glue, though. Um, I've just been, <laughs> this is gonna sound cheesy, but I've been burned by score tape too many times. So basically, I'm putting a line of glue right here. It's hard to see because it's white paper, but right down there where this meets. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit more up here. And then you wanna make sure that you get the edges. Okay, so the way that I do this is I'm just going to start, I'm just going to flip this up, get it started. Okay, and see now you can see it's kind of already on its way. And then just fold it up. You can use your bone folder to help you. 
make sure that you really get it tightly folded over. Okay. There we go. And now I'm gonna do this side too. Same exact thing. Actually, I'm going to turn it around like this so this is closest to me. Okay, so now we've done the top and the bottom and we're ready to do the side. One little thing um, that you need to know about is on these corners, you see here, if it kind of has this extra little edge in here, and if I just folded this over, it's got this, see there, I don't know if you can see it really well, but see that little edge there? You want to basically, it's so hard to explain, but use your bone folder and just pop that in a little bit. You wanna tuck in that excess that's gonna stick out okay it doesn't look very neat right there but when you fold it over you'll see what I'm talking about and I'm gonna do this to both so I'm just gonna take my bone folder here and just tuck that excess in okay so now when I fold this over I'm left with the clean edge on top and I don't have that excess poking out Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the top and the bottom, but to the side. And this is why we wanted at least one full inch left out here, because we need to have enough to fold over. Okay, so same idea. Run the line of glue right where the page meets the chipboard, and then you want your edges. And then again, same idea here, I'm gonna kind of roll this like that. Oops. Got some glue on that edge. And then use my bone folder and start working this over. You just want to take your time. It's not going to take that long, but at the same time you don't want to like do this too hastily because you know it's your cover. You want the cover to probably look better than anything else. Okay. And if you did it right and you tucked everything, then when you look on the front, you now have this really nice edge that's wrapped around, you know, very cleanly and neatly. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side um, with this other piece of paper right here, and I'll be back with you soon. Okay, so now I've got both um, of my sides covered. So now we're gonna do the middle of the cover, and we're gonna cover it with this kind of contrasting paper, whatever you wanna find. I'm using that fabric paper I showed you earlier. So we're gonna glue this down here. So basically, since this has no direction or pattern on it, it really can go anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my glue out here, and then we're gonna place this down over it. Um, so it's basically almost exactly I made the dimension to where it's just wide enough that it goes just over these seams where the paper hit the chipboard. Okay, so it's just barely wider than that. So it'll cover that. And we're doing the same basic idea as how we did the, um, papers. We're going to glue this down to the outside, then fold the edges over. Okay. 
and I got a little bit of glue in here and I want to take that out because I really don't want the glue seeping into that sort of Tyvek area and I got a little right here too because I don't want that to kind of glue shut because then it would kind of it would make the opening and closing a little stiff I'm gonna kind of wipe this in just a little bit okay so now I'm just gonna place this down and again oh that was pretty perfect Ben look at that okay Place it down. And I'm getting a little of that ink on my fingers, on my hands. So, you know what I'm gonna do after this is done? I'm gonna kind of cover this with something, maybe just a layer of hairspray, maybe some matte uh, gel medium. Um, I don't want gloss, but just something to, although that would kind of get rid of the Fabricy. Maybe I'll do the hairspray and see if that kind of works to hold in that um, ink so it doesn't really get all over everything. So then I flip this over. I'm going to push down a little more. Okay. And now we're going to then do the very similar thing that we did um, in wrapping these and we're going to wrap the top and bottom around. So again remember that as we do this we want to keep these sort of um i guess i don't know little ditches where the tyvek where it get the in between the chipboard where the tyvek is you want to keep that dry you don't want to glue that shut so as i'm making my lines of glue we're gonna skip over that edge okay And even when I'm doing, oops, you can't see that. Even when I'm putting the glue here, I'm gonna stop and pick back up. Cause I don't want, that, again, that glue to get in this little um, space where the Tyvek is. So, and I've never used this paper before, so I don't know how easily this is going to fold, but we're gonna find out right now. So I'm gonna do the thing where I've Kind of fold up and grab my bone folder. Ooh, there was some glue on there. My bone folder. This is a little bit difficult to fold. I hope that it's not too stiff that it um, oh my gosh, I'm getting that ink all over me. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to figure out a way. And I put the ink on there like days ago. So um, I plan to film this a long time ago. Life has just been crazy these uh, this past week for me. Very, very busy at work. Some exciting things happening um, in my life right now. So, okay, actually that, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. So now I'm gonna do the other side and it's pretty stiff right now because we've covered that up. But, um, you know, in a few minutes, we'll, we'll start to kind of fold it in. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing down here. Okay, so that's done. I think this looks really nice. And let's try and see how this works to fold. Actually, this is really thick and it's kind of, but you know, it only really needs to go this far. So that should be okay. When you're making that first fold, you can use your bone folder to kind of guide the paper and this yeah this is really thick but I think it's enough I might have to just kind of sit it like this overnight and put something to weigh it down 
But actually, that's not bad. But doesn't that look great? I think that looks really nice. Okay. The last thing we need, you know, and if it does get too, I, I can always kind of come in here and snip up um, this edge just to give it a little more space. Um, I don't think I need to do that though. But the one other thing we have to do here is I usually put, and I, you know, but I usually don't use this, but I put something here to hide <laughs> this join. And actually, because this paper is so thick, I think, and I'm changing this up on the fly, but I think I'm gonna cut this to be exactly the distance in between these two papers, because I, I don't wanna glue this on top of that fabric paper. It, I think it's just, it's too much. So this needs to be one, two, three, four, six, and it's gonna be super precise. Six and seven sixteenths. Because I really want it to be exact. So let me make way for my paper trimmer. Oh, and that's right where the oh man. That's right where the numbers kind of give out um, on this paper trimmer. So this is gonna be interesting. Six and seven sixteenths. So it's just shy of six and a half. Um, so I think it's gonna be like right here, I'm guessing. Ugh, I hate guessing like this. Let's see what happens. Is that right oh my goodness oh my goodness that is perfect look at that you guys look at that go me okay so now i'm gonna cut the other one and um just cut it using this as a guide okay So here we go. I've got these two, they're scored too, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold it on the score. I don't really need to burnish it. It doesn't have to be super great. I just wanna go ahead and fold it so, um, score it and fold it so it, it, it kind of knows where to give. So, yeah, I'm just gonna glue these down in here. Pretty easy peasy. Um, And I pretty much want the glue all over. I'm just gonna leave a little empty space in the middle so we don't gunk up the um, space there. I'm trying to think of a better term for that. What what should I call that? Like the the ditch? I don't know. <laughs> the little like okay. Kind of do that to help you out a little bit. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's really sticking. But okay. I do the same thing here. And again, this is purely aesthetic. This um, cardstock we're putting down serves no um, structural function. It is just to cover up the little um, opening where you can see that white Tyvek poking through. That is all this is for. Um, and I'm using the craft cardstock. You know, obviously I would use black if this was a black chipboard or black album. So, um, right. Because then when we glue the spine down, we're going to glue the spine in here. Okay. Um, 
So these would still be left exposed. We'll put the inside covers on here, but this, yeah, again, we just need to cover that up. Okay. So let's fold this in and we're gonna use our bone folder to make sure this sticks in. And if it's a little bubbly, it's okay. Cause again, the only part of this that's gonna show is like maybe just a little bit on either side of this sort of divot. That's the word, a little Tyvek divot. Does that, does that mean that? Does that make sense? Okay. So you just really wanna make sure that this folds easily. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's really good. Okay, so now our cover's pretty much done. Uh, the only thing left is to glue in the uh, binding right here. Okay, so now we're ready to glue our binding in. And it's pretty easy. You're just gonna glue it. You wanna center it on both sides and top and bottom, if anything. Um, you know, you might want to put it a little closer to the bottom, but um, especially if you're going to have top loading photo pockets, you might want to push it a little more to the bottom to give a little more room on top, but we're not. We're going to have side loading um, photo pockets. So uh, I'm just going to glue it in like this. You do want to make sure you use the strongest glue that you have. I would not use score tape for this. This is where I have the biggest difficulty with score tape is this falling off. Um, so. I'm gonna use this art glitter glue because it's nice and strong. Okay. And then just glue this down. Glue this bad boy right down. There we go. And you really want to make push uh, maybe extra hard on the fabric part to make sure it really all sticks down. Okay. So now we're like pretty close to being done here. Um the last step uh, is going to be essentially just gluing these pages in like this, okay? So then it will fold over. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that right now. Just make sure this is got a good grab going which it does it is not moving so how I do this it's kind of messy but um, you know I'm gonna use this glue and just glue up both sides and then you want to make sure because this is the front and this the pocket pages are the back um, and you want to make sure that, yeah, this is the right way up. You want to make sure that you're gluing the, <laughs> the correct side into the binding. And we are just going to slide it on, get it nice and centered. I like to open it up, place it down, and then push down. Because that assures me that it will be able to move freely. Um, if you stick it down all the way and then push it might be too close to the spine and not move as well okay close this other side push down so you see there's actually like just a teeny bit of space in between the real edge of the binding and where I we ended up gluing this down that helps this move and see how it lies totally flat both ways, and that's what you want. Okay, 
And now it's just a matter of going through and picking the rest ones. I mean, uh, and, uh, you know, doing this to the other four pages. Okay, so you can see here, once you get that spine glued in, it comes together very quickly, right? Um, I've got these pages glued in. The really main thing I have left to do in terms of getting this totally ready is doing the inside, front, and back covers to just finish this up. But other than that, we're pretty much like, we have a book now. We have a book with pages. Um, obviously, there's embellishing left to do um, and some finishing touches, but yeah, right? I mean, this is the, my favorite part when this all kind of just finally comes together and you're actually flipping through the pages that you've made in the book. So what I'm going to do between now and when I see you next will be to um, probably just finish out some more of these, making photo mats for all the pages. Uh, maybe doing some embellishing and using some of the cards that I have left. Um, and I'm also going to do just some uh, very basic inside, front, and back covers. Maybe some pockets. Maybe just a, a little flip up and that's it. I, I keep the inside covers pretty simple, generally. So I will do that and I'll see you soon. Happy crafting!